Great. Okay, question two. Vectors question. The points A, B, and C are position vectors given there, uh, where P is a constant. So these are these are how to get from the origin to each of these points. And and if if you like me, you prefer working in column vectors anyway. So that one is minus five, minus ten, twelve. To get to B, you do 1, 2, minus 3, and to get to the point C, it's the vector 3, 6, P. Um, given that the angle A, B, C equals 90 degrees, find the value of P. Again, okay, well this is, again, partly this is that same idea, isn't it, of uh, making sure we understand what we're looking for when we do this stuff. So the, the angle A, B, C, I'm going to do a little diagram. The angle ABC, um, ABC is 90 degrees. That's, that's what it means when we write it in that order. It's the angle ABC. So when we're considering this, the vectors that we're interested in are the vectors <laughs> that are departing that angle. So it's the vector BA and the vector BC that we want. So we need to work out what those vectors are so that we can show, oh, so that we can use the fact that they are at right angles to each other. So um, the vector BA, to get from the point B to the point A, you would go back to the origin and then from the origin to A. So that's minus OB plus OA. The vector B A is minus 1, 2, minus 3, plus negative 5, negative 10, 12, which gives us a vector of <coughs> minus 6, <coughs> minus 12, 15, I think. And the vector B C, in a similar idea, that's the vector that goes from B back to the origin and then from the origin to C. So that's minus OB plus OC. So it's the negative of 1, 2, minus 3 plus 3, 6, P. Again, really careful about the minus signs in here. What is this? Um, 2, 4, and 3 plus P, I think. I'm really happy with that. So these two vectors are supposed to be perpendicular, and that means from what we just said about this um, scalar product thing, the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0. It doesn't matter about their length, it means that if they're perpendicular, a dot b equals 0. Which we possibly should have mentioned. But uh, if they're perpendicular, then the dot product equals 0. So that dot product is equal to 0. So in the case of what we're doing here, if these are perpendicular, their scalar product is supposed to be equal to zero. And the way that we calculate the scalar product is we multiply the components and add things together. So that's minus six times two, plus negative 12 times four, plus 15 times three plus p, which gives us, what, what is that? Oh, that's another minus, sorry. ended up with 15p equals 15. So p equals 1. Just one little kind of aside on this to notice. Because, because these two lines are perpendicular, if you'd, if you'd found the vector AB and the vector BC, 
then you would still have got the right value of p, wouldn't you? Because they still would have been perpendicular. And I think you would have probably got all of the marks. Um, but it's not quite as nice, is it? I mean, you know, it's better to actually think it through properly and make sure that we're getting the right vectors. I'm just looking to see. Um, actually, one of the method marks was for doing Well, no, they, they, they appeared not to care, actually, which way around you did it. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, but it would have been nicer to have done it that way. Anyway, it didn't matter in this case. Right, cool. Uh, so we've got that one. And uh, now the next one, given instead that ABC is a straight line, find the value of P. Well, well, again, I think a diagram is really important. What we're talking about here is a straight line. And, and you've, got, you've got the origin, and we're saying that the three points A, B, and C lie in a straight line. Well, if the three points, any, any vector that's on the straight line is, is a scalar multiple of it for each other, all that we're saying here is that we already know some of these vectors. We know the vector B, C because we worked that out before, and we know the vector BA, because we worked that out before, they're in the same, in the same straight line, they're, they're <coughs> collinear, these three points, so that means they must be parallel to each other. So all we get from this is that the vector BA, which we know about, must be equal to some number times the vector BC which we also happen to know about. If they're in a straight line, that statement must be true. And we found these out already, haven't we? So the vector BA was minus 6, minus 12, 15. That's equal to some number times the vector BC, which is 2, 4, 3 plus P. And if that's true, then, then it must be true for all three of the components. So if we look at the i components, minus 6 is 2k, which tells us k is negative 3. We don't have to do this, but if we look at the j components, minus 12 is 4k, which tells us that k is minus 3, and, and that's reassuring, because if it hadn't been, we would have done something wrong. And if we look at the k component, k... I, I shouldn't have used k. But if we look at the last component, this letter k, which we found to be minus 3, must fit this one as well. k vector 15 is k times 3 plus p. <coughs> k equals minus 3, so 15 is minus 3 times 3 plus p, which we can solve however we like. Um, minus 5 is 3 plus p, so p is negative 8. Mm. And, and that would be empty. Is that, is that a cheer because that was right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Excellent. So we're there. Um, you got P to be 1 again. We did, but it's different P. So um, it was, it said find the value of P here, and P was equal to 1, you were right. And then it said given instead that A, B, C is a straight line. So instead of being right angle, you're in a straight line. Which implies that we've got a different value. Yes, Matthew. For the second bit, could yeah. we use the scalar product and set it because theta equal to 180? Because 180 is. If it's a straight line. Yeah. Um, you I could. Yeah, but then, then you, have to, you have to link it in with the, the length of the two vectors as well. So you could do that. You could say that the scalar product is equal to, if it's, if it's, one, if it's um, 180 or even if it's 0 you've got either kind of 1 or minus 1. So you're saying it's equal to the product of the length of the two vectors. It's quite a lot more working out though, isn't it? Because you've got to do a, a length of this vector, you know, which involves squaring 3 plus p along the way. You, you end up having 15p minus 15 over 9 root 5 multiplied by the root of 29 plus 60 plus p squared. Okay. 
which you then have to multiply up and have fun. Yeah. I think I would suggest that my way was slightly easier. It gives you the same answer now. It gives you the same answer, yes. So, well, alright. And that's all on video. <laughs>